purpose of this video tutorial is to explain how to compare data from two different extend sim runs and look at the sample means using Minitab. So for starters, we have to have the extend sim model properly configured to capture our data inside the database. This is the only method we can use to make sure we get data from multiple runs. So I have a different tutorial that explains how to do that. So we have our data from the database, we've done our runs, and we've captured the data. We want to also make sure that we've done it a minimum of 30 runs. If you can do that, 100 is better. This allows us to have sufficient amount of data to get statistical significance. So now that we've done our runs, inside the right block, so inside our right block, we open up the right block, and you can simply select the data that we're interested in. Now we're going to have two different data sets, so we'll do the runs two different times in this example. And each time, we're going to take the data over to Minitab. We can also pull it over to Excel if we want to do some kind of filtering or processing to it. But either way, it's just a copy and paste. So here we're going to right click and then copy all of our data. Then if we go over to Excel, we can paste that data in. Now notice that it does not have any of the labels or data headers. It's just strictly the data. Uh, again, we don't have to paste to Excel. We could paste our data directly into a mini tab worksheet. If we have our data in Excel, we can then click and copy and then paste over to Minitab. Now notice here that the labels do carry over from our Excel sheet. So now we have our data over into a Minitab worksheet. We're, we're going to get ready to do our two sample t-test. So to do that, we go to stats, then basic statistics, and we're going to do the two sample t-test. So the purpose of the two, two sample t-test is to determine whether or not we think the means of these two samples are likely to be the same, statistically speaking. So after we click on the two sample t-test, in this case, we have our samples in separate columns. So each sample is it in is its its own column. And within Minitab, you're not going to see any choices happening here. That's normal. This is how the interface works. You need to actually click into the boxes before any of the selections are going to appear. Now, we only have two columns worth of data. It doesn't really matter which one we label sample one and sample two. The other thing about the mini tab interface is now you need to push the select button. That then pushes the choice for sample one into the proper dialog box. We have to do the similar thing for condition number two. So now we have our two conditions here as far as our options. So 95% confidence level is the default. And for the most part, you can leave that the same. Now we need to choose what hypothesized difference we have. Again, that defaults to zero. So we want to know whether they're the same or different. We can also do a hypothesis test. Are they, for instance, 10 units apart or whatever hypothesized difference that we have. But if we just want to see if means are same or different, we would leave that at zero. Okay, the other choice we have here is just same or different, or we have a one-sided hypothesis test. The difference between the one-sided and the two-sided tests is, first of all, the confidence level alpha is all on one side for the one-sided test. So we have a all the probability is on one side if we do the one-sided test. When we do the two-sided test, the probability is spread on both sides. The other 
key point is when we do same or different, what we really mean is same or different within a tolerance. If we're really interested in the question, is one of the means at least as much as one of the other, so greater or less, then we would want to do these other hypothesized difference tests where we're using greater and less and not the same. But the mechanics of the test, regardless of how we do it, works the same way. So I'm going to just do hypothesized difference is not equal to the difference, which is our alternative hypothesis, the null hypothesis being that they're the same. And then we can choose which graphs we want. Um, we're going to do an individual plot and then click the OK button. OK, so now Minitab spits out the result for us. So first box up here tells us what test we were doing, which is the difference in means. And then it tells us the different the statistics, so the descriptive statistics for the two samples, condition one and condition two. And it gives us the mean and the standard deviation, the number of items in each sample. They do not have to be the same for this test to work, but for simulation runs, there's really no reason for them not to be the same. And then it gives us a confidence interval estimate for the difference. So here we can see this confidence interval does overlap zero, which is what we're looking for. Is zero a credible value for the difference in means? And the answer to that is yes, zero is a credible value for that difference in means. And so the conclusion would be that these two samples credibly could represent the same population. We can also see that through the p-value here. So just recall the catchphrase, if the p is low, the null must go. So the null here being that the difference in means um, is credibly zero. So we don't reject the null hypothesis. So we think that the null hypothesis is plausible. We're not going to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we think that the difference in means is zero. Uh, this p-value, when we say, quote unquote, low, what we mean is compared to the alpha that we chose, which is defaulted to 0 0.05 representing a 95% confidence interval. And here we can just see a plot of our data points under both conditions and where the means lie. Notice that the confidence interval itself is not represented on this plot.